Here we go again, a review of pre-capillary sphincters. Straight off the graffiti page as the wind blows away. Uh, here we go. Looking at this strange uh, structure right here, again, we're reminded of the fact that we oversimplified the story of um, arteries, capillaries, and veins uh, earlier, but now we're being more true to the original direct, direct plumbing. Here it goes. Uh, it's not arteries, capillaries, veins. It's arterioles, vascular shunts, and then veins. Or to be more correct, it's arterioles, met arterioles, thoroughfare channels, and then venules on the other side. Now, the capillaries themselves usually do not come directly off an arterial and do not attach directly to a venule. They tend to be branches away from one of these vascular shunts. The uh, flow of the blood through the capillaries is regulated by a ring of smooth muscle known as a precapillary sphincter. And in the systemic circuit, the precapillary sphincters respond to the chemistry of the interstitial fluid. Now, next to lazy cells, uh, cells that aren't doing much work, there's going to be oxygen left over from the last blood delivery. There won't be a lot of carbon dioxide because it's not doing a lot of work. And the pH will be relatively high because carbon dioxide plus water gives you acid and there isn't carbon dioxide here to speak of. So these are the conditions that cause systemic precapillary sphincters to close because these cells don't need the blood. And you have a limited amount of blood and you have to choose carefully where it's going to go. Well, down here, let's say here are some busy cells, and these busy cells will be using the oxygen, producing the carbon dioxide, and because there's higher levels of carbon dioxide, there'll be more acid, the pH will go down. So low oxygen, high carbon dioxide, and low pH are chemical conditions that cause systemic precapillary sphincters to open. Again, saying that these cells deserve that blood. Now, a moment after it opens, um, the cells will then be rich in oxygen, poor in carbon dioxide, and the pH will have gone up, and that will cause the systemic precapillary sphincters to close. Uh, after the cells then use the oxygen, produce the carbon dioxide, and make the acid, uh, those conditions will then cause the systemic precapillary sphincter to open. So vasomotion refers to this ebb and flow back and forth, open and close that occurs as you allow the blood in, then you utilize the materials, change the composition, and then you have to shut her down and then you have to open it up, moving back and forth. So systemic precapillary sphincters, they are delivering oxygen, they're picking up carbon dioxide and these conditions say where the delivery is necessary and the pickup is necessary and where it's not necessary. All right, next thing here, let's take a look at pulmonary precapillary sphincters. Now, once again, this is an example of autoregulation where the nervous system isn't involved. It's all about the chemistry in and around the blood vessels. So, in the pulmonary precapillary sphincter situation, what you got is arterioles and venules. You've got the med arterial and you've got the thoroughfare channel. Uh, here you have a pulmonary precapillary sphincter. Here you have a uh, pulmonary precapillary sphincter. Again, made up of smooth muscle and ready to open or close depending on the need of the area. Now, in this area right here, it's not what the cells need that's significant. It's what the blood needs. Uh, it's moving by alveoli, and the alveoli could have fresh air inside, or they could have stale air inside. So in the pulmonary capillaries, we're shopping for oxygen, where in the systemic capillaries, we were trying to find some place to deliver the oxygen where it was needed. Here, we're trying to find out where is the oxygen, so where is the shopping good? So. In those areas of the lungs where there's fresh air inside the alveoli, the oxygen content will be high, the carbon dioxide content will be low, and the pH will be high because there isn't a lot of acid. Because of that, uh, this is good shopping, and that will cause the pulmonary precapillary sphincters to open, to allow the blood to go through here to pick up the oxygen, drop off the carbon dioxide. 
in those regions of the lung where there is poor ventilation, where there is stale air in the alveoli, the oxygen content will be low, carbon dioxide level will be high, the pH will be low, the area is acid. Therefore, these are the conditions that say that the pulmonary precapillary sphincter should close because there's no reason to push the blood through an area where there's nothing to pick up and no place to throw the garbage. So like it says down here, the pulmonary precapillary sphincters, uh, these things are for picking up oxygen and delivering the CO2. Uh, one little aside right here, uh, temperature is also an issue in the saying. And so therefore, places where the temperature is relatively low or places where he, oxyhemoglobin tends to form easily. So in these fresh air spaces, you can expect the temperature to be somewhat lower than in these stale air places. The uh, internal body temperature is around 100 degrees Fahrenheit, perhaps 100.4. Um, and the air outside the body, relatively speaking, is cooler than that, most often cooler than that. So the air here uh, and the blood in this region would be somewhat cooler than the blood in this region right here and the air. So therefore, this is the place where oxyhemoglobin is more likely to form, where the temperature is slightly cooler. Now, by comparison, in the systemic circuit, the place where oxyhemoglobin is most likely to fall off is where there's a higher temperature. So, in the area where the cells are most busy, because they've used up the oxygen, they're making the carbon dioxide, and the pH is low, these are the conditions that cause oxyhemoglobin to fall apart. So not only does low oxygen, high carbon dioxide, low pH open systemic precapillary sphincters to deliver the blood, the heat also associated in this area helps deliver the oxygen from the hemoglobin so they can then be useful down here. Uh, strange aside is, if you put a warm compress <clears throat> on a region of the body, you're more likely to deliver oxygen to that spot. So putting a warm compress on a region of the body is a way of helping to accelerate the repair. Putting a cold compress would prevent the oxygen from being delivered to that spot. Now a cold compress could help reduce inflammation, uh, edema, and pain, so therefore if it's a sports injury, you might choose the cold compress to reduce the swelling, to reduce the pain, so you can get back out there and uh, keep on playing and hurt yourself. But if you're trying to repair something, you might want to use a warm compress to help deliver the oxygen. Uh, another odd thing about this is, uh, in frostbite, one of the things that happens is the temperature of the area is so cold that the oxygen does not fall off of the hemoglobin easily. So even though the blood will go through an area that needs it, the blood won't necessarily lose the oxygen. The area that's starving for oxygen will be a bright red as the blood comes in with the oxygen, moves through and comes out with the oxygen. In the case of frostbite on fingers and nose and ears, uh, if you're pale, you can see the redness of the fingers, the nose, and the ears, and cheeks also, uh, as the blood's moving through, it stays red because it's not losing the oxygen. Then the tissue dies from lack of oxygen. So, again, summary of the conditions that cause systemic precapillaries to open and the conditions that cause pulmonary precapillary sphincters to open. If you learn one of them, such as the conditions that cause systemic precapillary sphincters to open, you know that what causes pulmonary to open is the opposite of that. So if you learn one and the logic, all the rest of them seem to fall together.